Hey, I'm Lincoln Wright. Let's test out AK Interactive's extreme metal colors. Hey, Pop Robots. I'm looking for a uh, couple of metallics to use on my current full care project. So I wanted to test these out to see what kind of paints they are and to share the results with you. Let's cover three quick things. Uh, number one will be the uh, thinners. What kind of thinners are mixable into them that will help us to understand what kind of paint they are. Number two would then be the durability. Uh, do they scratch? Scratch sniff test maybe uh, and see if they're sandable. And then number three will be buffability. Can we buff them to a shine? Okay. Let's go. Okay, first things first, let's test out the thinners from what I would consider chemically uh, weaker right up through levels of hotness. And we'll be testing it on steel. Now the bottle actually says high quality enamel based paints, but I don't believe it. So let's test that out too. Alrighty, Tamiya enamel paint thinner, X20. Child proof almost. Had some trouble there, Link. Okay, one drop. Boom. Oh, no, no, no. Check it out. That's uh, oil and water. That's that's dribbling off the top of it. It's not it's not mixing at all. It's staying very, very separate. Oh, no. I, no, there's some weird breakup happening now. Okay, let's let that sit for a few minutes and see what happens. Alrighty, next, a uh, hobby color thinner. This is, uh, it's a little bit hotter. Uh, it's mostly, mostly uh, ethanol alcohol based. And I don't imagine this one would be strong enough to thin it. Let's have a look. Huh. Okay, it's sitting on top. Whoa. Yeah, that's not really going in, is it? Clean end. Nah, no, that's that's causing breakup, weird coagulation. Okay, so definitely not water or alcohol based. Boom. Okay, next up in level of hotness, real colors, the high compatibility thinner. I don't expect this one will work. I am going against what I think this is designed for, but it is hotter than the previous one. And okay, there's activation happening, but Looks angry in there. Interesting, that's a lot hotter than uh, the aqueous stuff. It's hyperactive though, there's something going on in there chemically. We'll set that for a few minutes, okay. Now lastly, uh, T07 from uh, Gaia Notes. Now this is a, a quite hot thinner on the scale of, uh, of thinners and uh, I'm suspecting this one will work really well. And once you get to this level of hotness, uh, things just work magically for you. Uh, it's like you can get into nightclubs for free, so long as you're wearing like a, uh, a revealing dress. Drop and yeah, that's staying contained. Looking like it's keeping the property. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Now for control purposes, let's use their uh, proprietary branded thinner that's used for this, that's supposed to be used for this range. And we'll make sure that we're giving it all a nice fair test. Is it two drops? Yeah, that appears to be the hottest of them all so far. You can see how far it spread and quickly too. It reminds me of that scene in uh, Anchorman where he's smelling Sex Panther and says, whoa, that's, uh, that's quite pungent. Not quite gasoline, but uh, smells very, very hot. In fact, it smells like lost brain cells to the point where I can't remember the last time I smelled something that strong because those brain cells are gone. Okay, results of the thinner test. And it's very obvious just overlooking them all now. This is giving it just five minutes to sit here that out of all of the thinners that I've used today, the only one worth using will be the actual one that comes with the product. Uh, enamel thinner. So definitely, I don't believe they're enamel based and it has separated a great deal. Uh, have a look at this close up photo for you here. Quite interesting though. Uh, worst reaction has been with the hobby color, the aqueous thinner. Uh, it's, yeah, very chunky. Uh, again, a lot of separation here with um, the high compatibility. High compatibility. Uh, easy to use, difficult to say. High compatibility thinner from AK Interactive. And uh, which is actually really good for a bunch of paints, but not this one. 
Even lacquer thinner, this was the shock for me. Uh, sexy lacquer thinner was rejected for the nightclub despite wearing that slinky dress. It's, it's congealed and nasty looking, so I'm very happy I didn't test that. Uh, and lastly, this one is looking, looking mighty fine. It's looking great. Uh, yeah, I really like that finish. Cool, okay, so thinner, done. Outcome, use this. Okay, now actual results. I succumbed to spoons because uh, for those of you who've been following the progress of my fault care project, uh, I've got a bit of time invested in that one and it wasn't something to, uh, to, to test a brand new product on. So, plastic spoons are the go. As a control, I did half of them, including a spare with black base. And it looks like this. It's actually very nice. Uh, it goes on, it was pretty, you know, foolproof. I just blasted it on. And uh, looks pretty good, nice and shiny. And, uh, and quite black, which is good for black base. Uh, and the rest of them, I went straight on the plastic, so you can see. And uh, the writing is very nice. That was uh, my lovely wife, Tom Ware, helped me out with writing the names on spoons so that uh, I could do a, a test of uh, blank plastic versus black base. So, as you can see, it does go onto the, the, the blank plastic, the unprimed plastic, nicely. I mean, it looks good. But if you do add black base, look at the, I'm not sure my camera gear can show you what my eyes can see, but the, the depth of color is different and it's quite apparent up close. Uh, depth and uh, shine is much nicer with, uh, with black base, so definitely I recommend that. Steel was pretty good, it's one of the ones I wanted to test. Their gunmetal is very nice looking. I especially like that one, that's a, uh, that's a favorite. That's going on some gumpla. Uh, burnt metal, the difference here with black base is much more apparent, so I would then guess that perhaps more into the yellow end of the spectrum, we might uh, see more of a need for black base. Uh, however, uh, testing it with a white shiny base might be interesting too. It'll be different to the plastic. And this one, dear, 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 dear you know, that one. <laughs> I'm serious about it. I don't know how to say that. Because, dear, yep, that's the one. It's uh, a really nifty color, and I think this is one of my winners. I really like this one. I did do a little quick impromptu test as to its, uh, its durability, because you know, it's durable. So I wanted to test it out. Uh, you do have to give them a little bit more drying time than straight lacquers. So they're not, you know, they're not like a Japanese lacquer. And just for the record, uh, I did these before the test, so I didn't want to mess around. I used the thinner that comes with them. And based on the outcomes of the test, you know, thank you. I'm so glad I didn't uh, start testing it at that stage. Okay, nice simple durability test. I just want to try it out. The black base, I, of course the gloss will buff off, but I want to see how it adhered to the plastic spoon. This is a uh, 600. God hand sanding sponges. They truly are sponge worthy. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. It's adhering very well. Yeah, that's looking good. Yep, that's staying on well. Just the glass is coming off, which we would expect. Something perhaps a little more stringent. You guys remember that one? Dirty Rotten Scoundrels? Michael Caine, that was gold. Uh, this one on God Hand 2, I've got like 400 grit. And we'll try a little bit of a scuff. No, no worries, okay. Yep, that's, that's it's sandable. That's just buffing the gloss off, which, you know, truth be known, if we applied these sanding tools to the top of my head, the glass would buff off as well. So, you know, I have nothing on this product. I'm gonna go straight to 400 uh, based on the durability of black base. Now this one does not have black base. It's uh, duralium. I'm really sorry, I got duraluminium, duraluminium. So yeah, there we go, with practice, even monkeys can do things. Duraluminium, that's probably close to what it's supposed to be. Okay. Yes, so it's sanding through because it's very thin, but it's not too bad. Durability is pretty good. Yes, I would say that's, that's good enough for a heavy-handed modeler like myself to work with. 
Now, this one is on black base. We'll see how that looks. 600 again. Nice. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, it is actually more durable than I expected. You can scuff and scar it. Whoa. Effects potential ensues. Yeah, I like that. Okay, durability is thumbs up from me. That's good enough. It's uh, definitely not a fragile paint. Let's give them a really quick buffability test. I'm uh, got a feeling it won't, but just in case. The uh, yeah, it's not usually. You know how buffable paints? They've got that initial friction that quickly gives way as the paint buffs. I'm not really feeling it here. So straight on plastic one, no, I, I don't think that's buffable. Maybe with polish, etc., you can get into it, but I'm just talking about quick buffable paint. Here we are on black base, and no, I'm not seeing it. No, okay, so at least initially, and for a quick, I don't think, uh, I don't think it's a buffable paint. Okay, in conclusion, they're good. I would even say very good, but extreme, sorry, not so much. Uh, you know, what poor paint can really live up to marketing hype like that? My workbench is probably just like yours. I've got the two settings, right? Stuff I use and stuff I don't that drifts off into obscurity. These have already had a use uh, here on my current Folkep project, so, you know, that's a win. And I will continue to look for, uh, you know, projects in the future to maybe try them out and test different variations with them. And I'll keep you in the loop on that too. Hey, if you like paint test videos like this, there's an earlier one I did uh, from paints from the same company. It's the Real Colors Standard Series, and and I've linked that for you up there in the top right. If you like the channel uh, and would like to support it, there's a couple of ways you can do it and I've linked them for you in the description below. The best way of course is our Patreon campaign where you get a bunch of cool and fun rewards including uh, additional exclusive content, tutorials, etc. Uh, behind the scenes look at the book projects I'm working on. And um, three, and this is probably the most fun one for me now, is uh, access to our uh, Paint on Plastic Discord channel where you get to hang out with me and the other pop robots and talk, you know, cool stuff like this. Uh, and, you know, but be warned, there's banter. There's much banter. There's a lot of fun jokes and things happening there. Thanks a bunch, guys. I really look forward to your progress on the Machine and Krieger projects for our competition. And uh, there'll be more from me soon too. Thanks a bunch. See ya. Bye. These already have a use. Uh, as seen here, the uh, Duralumium, Duralumium. I will keep them in mind for future projects. Okay. <laughs> okay. That went well, didn't it? Mm. Big thanks to Hobbyco and the visionary Ryan San Pedro for bringing the Japanese hobby to us locally. Pre-roll shout out for the exploding epic pop robot rocket punch team. We super appreciate you. Ivan, Grant, Con, Jack, RJ, Tweets, Matthias, Peter, Robert, Kelso, Kevin, Derek, Dom, Nick, Danny, John, Andy, Philip. Jake, Pete, Ben, Commander Newbie, Hal, Kieran, Jody, and welcoming Chris Regis, Guy Finney, and Nelson to the team. Thank you so very much, guys. And of course, the Brobot Inner Circle, the awesome folks that make this happen. I couldn't do it without you. Always, thank you so very much. Please join us. <laughs>